Okay, as we get started in the chapter on probability for IB math, um, we want to first discuss the idea of experimental versus um, theoretical probability. Okay, so when we talk about an experimental probability, um, we have done, you can think of it as we've kind of, we've done an experiment, we've run, we've gathered some data, but we don't know everything. We don't, it's not like, um, theoretical probability would be like, what's the probability that you flip a coin and you get a heads? Okay, if it's an unbiased coin, it's got two sides, and so your options are either heads or tails, and so you've got two options, and one of them is heads, so the probability of rolling or of flipping a coin and getting a heads would be one out of two, that, that probability of one half. Um, if, the, if I say, what's the probability of rolling a dice and getting a three? Well, when you have a dice, you've, you've either got a one, two, three, four, five, or six on the sides, um, if they, when they just say the word dice or, or you roll a die, um, they're implying that it's a six-sided die and it's an, a fair die and all that kind of stuff. If it's, um, if they're trying to indicate that it's weighted or that it's not just a straight up regular boring die, not boring, they're fun, they're, th they're thrilling, whatever. But if it's, if it's something besides the ordinary, they have to tell you. Okay, if all they do is say you roll a dice and what's the probability of whatever, you can assume that it's fair and you can assume that it's got the side, the numbers one through six. So the probability of rolling a three, and notice that, that notation of how we're going to do that, the probability of something um, is equal to, well, there's one out of these six options. So the probability of rolling a three is a six. Now, both of those were examples of theoretical probability because we can figure out all the possible things that could happen and then figure out which, you know, how, how, what's, what are we looking for out of those possible things? Experimental is a little more like what we're dealing with right now. What is the, um, we, we might say, well, what's the probability that the disease gets spread? Okay, so um, we don't know necessarily because we have to know, like if we wanna know the probability of, um, uh, let's not be too morbid, but let's say that the probability that somebody um, ends up in the hospital um, with, with, with the coronavirus, with the COVID-19. Um, what we would need is we would need to know how many people, um, the number of people, um, number of people in the hospital with the disease. Hospital, oh, I can't spell. That's assuming, um, okay, sorry. It's the number of people in the hospital with that with the with the disease um, divided by the total number um, who had the disease. Okay, and so then you could figure out, well, okay, if I know the total number of people in all of the world and all of the hospitals that ended up going to the hospital with COVID-19, I can divide that if I know the number of all the people in all the world um, that, that actually have the disease. Well, good luck. I mean, that's a big part of what we're struggling with and we're trying to figure out not we, not me necessarily, but that's a big part of what our policymakers and our doctors and our and our statisticians are trying to figure out. They don't know. We don't know this number. We don't know how many people have the disease. Um, some people are asymptomatic, and some you know they they don't show any symptoms. Some people. Um, my brain just stopped. Some some people may have had a mild case and didn't realize it was it was that, and um, and may not have even known that they had it. Some people, um, and then this number is a little bit more clear. I mean, you know, if you're admitted to the hospital, you know if that that you have that COVID. Um, but worldwide, that that's a big number, and so this is a this is a tricky problem. Um, but notice that this would become an example of an experimental probability. Like if you think if you're trying to say what's the probability I get the disease, what's the probability that I have to be hospitalized, that I'm seriously ill enough that I have to be hospitalized. Well, that's, that's a big part of our struggle. Um, and, but that, that's what we're looking at when, um, that, that's more of the real world probability. So we're going to learn a lot, predominantly in the theoretical world, um, just because it's, it's something we can do. Um, there are really smart people that have not yet figured out this probability. Um, I hope that makes it relevant and, and kind of gives you a, a sense of what's what's happening, what's getting started here. Um, one of the things that they'll ask you to do in um, in the book is that they'll ask for uh, the sample space. Okay, and that could be a case of you're rolling. We have left the world of experimental probability. Um, 
this is something that's a little more theoretical that we know how to do. Um, it could be that we've got a spinner. You know how have you seen those little things? And let's say it's got the letters A, B, C, D inside the spinner. And then we're going to roll a dice. And so then we have one, two, three, four, five, and six that could happen on our dice. Um, I want to draw a dice. Well, that was, however, what, I don't know, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. Um, but I know that the one is across from the six and the four and the three are across from each other, so it had to be two or five, uh, whatever. Okay, um, that's seconds of your life you'll never get back. So if we are going to say, what's the probability, what, what can happen if we spin our little spinner and, and we end up in one of those and then we roll our dice and we end up with one of these possibilities. So what we're gonna do is we can create a sample space, A, B, C, D, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And so they may say, what's the probability that you get um, an even number or a vowel? I don't know, I'm making something up. So an even number could happen here, 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 here. And then, or a vowel means that it could be this, this, this as well. So there's a total of, this is four times six, there's a total of 24 options. If they ask for the probability of an even or a vowel, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, and then, uh, what is that, three times three, six plus nine is 15. So that probability would be that 15 out of 24. Um, but notice, if I had to think about, okay, I've got this dice and I've got this, it's a little trickier um, for me to there may be other ways to do it, but we're just getting started. But one of the things that can be very helpful is to draw out this sample space so that you can see see how it's going. Uh, another thing that we're going to look at as we begin with probability is um, they kind of did this probability from a chart. Okay, so what I did, because I'm, I don't know, whatever, I miss you guys. So I made a chart of my current classes, uh, and so I... I had I haven't thought about how many males and females I have in different classes, but this is it. This is it. This is what I figured out. Um, so I teach three different courses. I teach honors pre-cal. I teach IB um, analysis and approaches HL, and I teach IB analysis and approaches SL. And so I went through and figured out how many male and how many female. Um, so notice. What I, what I can do in this, they may ask different kind of probability questions. Um, what's the probability that a student chosen at random is male? Okay, well, we need to figure out, it, it could be helpful also to come up with totals. So, um, and I need, you guys, we gotta get back to school, my pins are dying. Okay, well, and I miss you. Um, okay, so I may say, oh, well, let's, well, it would be helpful to figure out the totals. Um, what is that? 22 plus 26 is 48. If I can't add, I'm so sorry. Um, and this is 32 plus 31 is 63. When I add that together, I get 111. We'll see if I'm right in just a second. That adds up to 52. This adds up to 13. That adds up to 46. When I do that, I have, what is that? 59 plus 52, sure enough, is 111. Okay. Um, so I may say, what's the probability of a random student being male? And so then it's, well, 48 out of that total, 111. I may say, what's the probability that they're in IB? Um, I might just say that. Probability that one of my random st my students is in IB would be this. If you pick one of the current Ms. Kosh students, what's the probability that it's an IB student? We add this together, right? Can I add? Um, barely. And we'd get this 59 out of 111. Um, I might say, what's the probability of my IB kids? Um, what's the probability that out of my IB kids, I would pick a girl in HL? Okay, well, a female in HL, there's six. Oh, hang on. <laughs> my notation. The probability of... A uh, girl in HL, given is kind of this notation, we draw this line, given they're in IB. They probably, when we, we go a little farther, we'll describe, we'll discuss what that line tells us in our probability. I'm not overly worried about that currently. Um, but this would be, we said that there were six girls in HL out of my total 59 IB students. 
Okay, we could, we, we have all sorts of different things that we can do, and there's some, there's some practice for you in the book. Um, the weird thing, I don't have my actual book at home, um, so I've been relying on the PDF that's um, on my computer, or my, my iPad, and uh, this section of the book, they put the first page in twice, they don't put the second page in, and they put the third page in. So there's not, I don't have access to enough practice for you, or much practice for you, but um, hopefully that'll be okay. So do make sure you do the one that I assign, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. And if you have the book at home, this is book one, chapter, I don't remember, 11 or 12? It'll say probability. So use the actual book if that's helpful. Um, what else is I going to say? We could say something like, what's the probability that they're male or in pre-cal? Okay, so then if they're in male or in pre-cal, that means that I'm looking at, I want all of these kids and, and all of my pre-cal ones. Okay, so then I could figure out the probability that a student picked is, it, is male or in pre-cal, then becomes, what is that, 74 out of the whole 111 kids. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Um, we're going to jump into more difficult probability before too long. So make sure you get a good foundation and go practice the problems I assigned.